All right, hello there. So today we're going to um, do a little bit of hard surface modeling. And it's kind of more of a, kind of like a, an extension of an introduction into hard surface modeling. And we're going to model this retro television. So it's a CRT. And when you're modeling an object for, um, for a game, uh, you want to consider how close is the object? Um, is it something that's going to be, uh, you know, just uh, focused on? Uh, is it going to be something that the the player can interact with? Um, if there's movable parts to it, then you're going to want to like, you know, rig it up. But we're going to presume that this is kind of a low res, uh, medium low res uh, uh, television and uh, that there are no movable parts to it. So if you have a scene that, uh, that where uh, it's a really high res model in a scene that's somewhat low res, uh, the, the player is going to naturally presume that this is something that one can interact with, kind of like the whole thing of, uh, that I mentioned in class called uh, uh, Chekhov's gun. So you want to make sure that, uh, that it is congruent with, um, with the scene. So uh, this will be the first part of the uh, of the little tutorial um, where I'm just going to model it uh, and then the next part of the tutorial uh, we're going to um, we're going to uh, make the texture for it in Photoshop. So to start with here is the model. Um, it's pretty organic it has kind of a rounded shape to it on the front. It's uh, rounded in the back, uh, flat in the front. It, the television is inset. It has two knobs. Uh, so we're going to want to make sure that these knobs um, are in the right place uh, up and then over here at about, what is that, 930. Um, so these are, this is the regular uh, uh, what is it 2 to 13 and this is uh, 0 to 99 so this is VHF and UHF uh, and which probably doesn't mean anything to uh, to anybody that didn't grow up in the 70s or 80s <laughs> just saying so uh, let's start with by actually importing um, some um, some image planes Importing image planes can be really useful. That way you don't have to have like um, an image open uh, in another window and you can have it inside of your scene and you can match it against uh, your object that you're modeling against the, uh, the image planes. Uh, you don't want to create an image plane in perspective view because it locks it right to the uh, viewport and it's kind of irksome. So we'll want to switch to, let's switch the front view isometric then we go to the viewport um, menu view we select image plane import image and then we look for it and uh, let's see here I have to find it where is it come on computer there we go. All right. TV references. So let's look for our front. There's our front. And then let's go to our uh, right view. And then we'll import a viewport for that. So view, image plane, import image. This is our right view. There's that one. And then let's get uh, a top view. So some of these uh, images also might be a different size um, and we can adjust that size as well. I'm going to image plane. Incidentally, um, um, all of the um, uh, environment artists that I've worked with I'll use Maya in a um, single viewport. Uh, so I think it's a very good uh, habit to have. 
import. So the good thing, and then let's go back to perspective view. So the good thing about, <clears throat> let me let the puppy in. Uh, let's see. So the good thing about something, I don't remember. Oh, yes. The good thing about image planes is that it automatically creates a um, this, uh, this, poly, uh, this polygon or this face uh, with a texture applied to it at the exact um, uh, ratio uh, that the um, uh, that the the original image is at. So that's uh, that's very helpful in creating your um, your reference because if you made if you didn't do that you'd have to make a polygon or make a face make a hyper shade uh, a shader and then import the texture make sure it was the right size etc so this is super fast uh, and in you know like five minutes we were able to do it or less. All right, so um, with this, uh, I'll just be going through some simple um, hard surface stuff. We'll start with a cube, as we often do, polygon primitive cube. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And we're just going to get the basic shape here first. So to start with, let us um, select all of the faces on the back. This may be different than we did in class because I was uh, fooling around with it here at home and I realized there are a couple other ways of doing it. And also there is no, not necessarily one right way of doing this. There's a lot of different ways, very many different ways. So we'll start with this cube. We'll select all of the faces on the back. Actually, since we have that over there, let's do this other side and we'll just have that side open. And then we'll go to Mesh. Oh, OK. Since this screen is so small, uh, I usually like using the pop-up window. Uh, but the, uh, the second window shows up on a different screen. So I'm going to go over to the menu at the top. And then we go to Smooth. And so Smooth will uh, smooth out the back. And then we'll go here, and let's change it to 2. So we have a nice rounded uh, back there. Press W to get out of that. And let's extend it just a little bit. So already it's starting to look very much like uh, what our television is going to look like. So uh, get into object mode. Now this is why the uh, image planes are so neat. Moving them out of the way. I'm going to move this behind that. And then I'm going to go to the right view. And uh, notice how the television is in front of it. If we were in, uh, if we had oriented this wrong, um, it might be like that. So if we go into the right view, we can't see the TV or our model that we're making. So let's move this back here and then let's go back to our right view. So in order to be able to see what it looks like behind it, we need to make this image, uh, we need to make it x-rayed. So we need to be able to see through it. There's two things that you can change. We go to shading, we check on x-ray, not x-ray joints, but x-ray. And then we turn on wireframe on shaded. Just handy because if we uncheck it, we can see the wireframe and then exists without actually uh, having it active. So let's go here and extend it a little bit, scale it, rotate it. There, that's pretty good. Okay, so a couple things that we can notice uh, about this. It's already looking uh, pretty sweet. Uh, a couple things about it is that there's a curve here in the front. So we want to simulate that. Now, we want to make sure that um, that we're not that we're selecting both sides. We don't want to select just one side. So I do a marquee around all these guys, and uh, just move it down a little bit because we want to move this side too. I rotate it and put it about there. And then we can grab those three with the marquee, move it out just a little bit, select that, and move that out there. All right. Now, let's look at what it looks like here. Okay, so definitely have some issues with uh, the front. 
uh, we have one side view looking good. Let's move this out of the way. Let's bring this front one over here. Let's move it right behind. And let's go to the front view. Okay, now notice here the model is uh, behind the image plane. So we go back to perspective and uh, then we're going to move the image plane on the other side. And we go back to front view and now we can see it. So uh, with the image plane, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So it kind of fits the, uh, it's right in the middle and it fits kind of in between because we matched the side view. Now we just need to match that front view. And also you can see that this picture is not exactly um, symmetrical. So I'm just going to move it just a little bit, rotate it. And there we go. All right, so here is our uh, object. I'm going to scale this guy out a little bit. And we can see, I'm going to scale out the extents. So this side is matching this side. And the top side is matching the top side. There we go. So now the one thing that we're missing is that we can see this corner here is out um, in the middle of nowhere. So what we'll want to do is add some cuts along the front of this guy. So let's move this in front so we can see the front. Let's turn off X-ray. And let's do some multi-cuts um, on the front here. So I uh, press shift control X and I click on that one. And I click on that. And we're just going to go from this one to this one, just like so. also have this side. Click on that one. Click on that one. Enter. Click on this one. Click on this one. Enter. Okay. Let's go back into object mode. Move it behind our reference. Go back to front view. Turn x-ray back on. Go into vertex mode. And let's, now we want to make this, this symmetrical. And you can use symmetry. Sometimes symmetry can be a little bit, um, shall we say, hard to deal with. And I'm um, selecting two at a time by holding, um, by selecting one, holding down shift and control to select the other. I'll move that up. And then I'm going to select these guys. To make these symmetrical, we scale them out like this or scale them in. This side is a little bit off so we can go into object mode and maybe move it a little bit over here so it's more even. Um, you know none of this is super super exact because this is Maya and not AutoCAD so keep that in mind and we're gonna scale these guys in and then I'm gonna press W and move them up as you can see, we're getting that shape looking pretty good. Other ways to make uh, this kind of symmetry is you can um, uh, you can just move one side and then cut the whole thing um, apart. We may want to make a little cut over here in order to get some extra little um, detail, and that might be a good one. But let's see how we're doing here. Shading. X-ray, turn that off. Let's move it out in front. Look at that. That looks pretty. So yeah, let's um, let's add a little extra cut here. And this one, let's see if we can do symmetry. Uh, so if we want to do symmetry, um, I'm going to uh, make a cut here and make and have a symmetry cut over here. So we look at the axis right here, and we can see that the x-axis is going this way. So let's go over here and select Object X. See if this works. Shift Control X, 
there we go click over here and then we can hold down uh, uh, shift and click over here good and then let's go down here and hold down shift and click over there and then let's finish it off right over here there all right so symmetry did work in this point and then be sure to turn symmetry off because that'll cause you some problems and let's move it behind the object again go back to front view let's turn on x-ray again go into vert mode and remember we have symmetry off so I'm gonna move this up select both these guys move these down a little maybe scale them out just a tiny bit and then we also did that with these guys uh, we have those guys down there but I'm gonna take these scale them out a little move them up select these guys which are the ones that we just cut scale them out a little and there that looks good F8 to get back in object mode go back into perspective mode as soon as we get this object uh, like basic shape done uh, then we are pretty much uh, like two-thirds of the way done so I think that's good for now uh, it's a little pointy um, but let's not worry about that um, or overly focus on that also I'm used to modeling this guy with the uh, with it inversed uh, so um, that's that would be like this so I'm going to undo that I want this to be flipped so I'm going to go to scale X in the channel box and I'm going to put a minus sign there and that automatically flips it okay so we have that and I think that's looking pretty good um, now one the other thing that we need to do is we need to look at it from the top view so let's bring our top view over here and pause this all right there we go okay and we can see it's kind of in the middle let's move it below and see if that works we'll go to the top view press F all right we're in front um, then I go to x-ray and we have kind of the basic shape so we're going to uh, make the um, reference fit to our uh, shape I'm going to scale it up move it over okay now <clears throat> Here's our shape. So the curve of everything looks pretty good. Uh, we could bring these guys in just a tiny bit. We could select these guys, and these are the corners, and we could bring those out a little bit. And then we could select these guys, bring them up a little so that they're conforming a little bit to the shape. And now we want this curve. So keep in mind also that uh, this is uh, a photograph, and um, uh, so it has naturally the distortion of a lens. So I'm going to bring and remember to use those um, the marquee. I'm going to bring this up here. And now I think I'm going to I'm going to try uh, using symmetry again. And again, we have the axis of X um, being the symmetry. So it's going along this way, and there's the X over there. So I'm going to turn on symmetry for object X, and let's see if that works. Yeah. Then I'm going to try rotating these guys, and you can see it's rotating them pretty well. And I move it up a little. You move this down because I want this to be a nice curve. We don't have to make this super exact like the television, but as exact as we can make it, relatively. Let's look at what our object looks like. Turn off x-ray. Cool, that looks pretty neat. I like it. Okay, big, uh, big steps forward. So now, 
we want to make this uh, base uh, design. So our base design looks, um, if we look at it a little closer, we can see it's it's basically like a, uh, um, a stand that's fairly wide uh, and it curves around, goes up and goes into the object. So there could be a bunch of different ways that we could do this. I think the best way to do it is to start with a cylinder. So we start with a cylinder, create polygon primitives cylinder. We bring that guy over. Let's look at it from the right side. Press F to get to our object. There we go. Let's see if we can scale out a little. Bring that a little closer. Select our object. And then we also want to think about the balance of the object. And that's good for a base. And let's go to perspective view. And then grab this one, scale it out. And go back to our right view. That looks pretty good. But I think we're going to want it a little bit lower. All right. Cool. Now with that base, obviously we're going to want it to be down here. So it's it's uh, centered. The center point of that object is right, obviously in the center. I want to snap it to the middle of uh, here, the center of this object. I hold down V. I grab this axis, and I aim it at one of these verts. And now we're centered. And then what we'll do is we're going to go into face mode. Oh, we have symmetry turned on. Turn that off. Face mode, hold down tab, and paint the top. Make sure you have all of those faces selected. Now we just want to uh, extrude this. And it's pulling from the side, which is unusual. Um, but let's turn this little guy to the right by just clicking on it. And then we're going to pull it up a little bit just a bit. Press R for scaling. Let's pull it in. That looks about right. And press Control E to extrude again. Turn this to the right. Press R for scale. Bring that in. Pull it up. You want to do a nice bit of uh, roundness here. Control E again. Click on that to turn it to the right. There we go. All right. So I think that looks pretty good. And does that go into our object? Yes, it does. OK, so we have our base, and we have our major uh, our, our, our size over here. Let's go in and. Um, Let's let's create the um, the television screen. So the television screen could be done a number of different ways. Um, one way that we could do it, I think that probably the best way to do it is to use a boolean. And I know some people don't like booleans, but I think they're a fantastic way to start. So let's make sure that we save our object and I'm saving it. Look at me save it. Ooh -wee. Okay, let's save it. TV example one. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a cutting shape, and we're going to create it in the size of this um, this monitor. Okay, once again, it's flipped. I just just remember that you want uh, the dials on the right. So here we're going to create a cube again. Ooh, big surprise. We're going to scale it up. We're going to turn on X-ray. Move it over here. Let's click on this guy so that we can make it a little bit more symmetrical. We're going to move it down. And so you can see that the scale of it goes out a little bit. But let's do it to the actual, just the screen size. Uh, 
Okay, so here I'm going to do some multi-cuts right in the center of it, vertically, and then horizontally. Here we go. And then uh, I'm going to do a marquee around this because I know I have two sets of verts. Like so. Then go into object mode. Oh, let's look at that. We have um, that one goes in a lot. Let's scale that in. There we go. Okay. I like that better. There. All right. Let's go back to our perspective mode. Press F to get to our object. And let's scale it so it's a little thinner. Then let's select each of these edges. And then we hold down Shift, right mouse button, bevel edge, and we get that. That looks pretty good. We could do segments uh, to two. I like that even better. All right. Good. So we have kind of our cutting shape to start with. Let's make it a little thicker. But also notice that um, the screen kind of comes out a little bit. So in order to simulate this, we need to make the back of it. We'll presume this is the back since it's closest to the television. A little bit smaller. So let's bring that in just a little bit. We also have a curve, so be aware of that. Let's take this television, let's put it a uh, piece over there, put it close in there. Now we have to make sure that it's going in enough. Now the TV is a little bit flat like that. So let's look at the top, press 4 in order to look at the um, wireframe. Let's select these guys, bring that back a little bit. Let's select this one, turn on symmetry for X. We'll rotate that just a little bit. Rotate that just a little bit. Then let's also do a multi-cut on one side here. And since we have symmetry on, there we go. Okay, it's done the top, but it hasn't done the bottom. So that's not too good. We could also just go down here and kind of eyeball this. And then sometimes Multicut doesn't want to do what you want it to do. Okay, so there we go. So the only reason I was doing that was because I wanted um, all these guys to be symmetrical uh, and uh, a little bit curved. Let's see how this looks. Let's rotate that just a little bit. 
Let's press 4 so we can see how far it goes in. All right, I like that. Save it. All right, so remember in this instance, since we're doing a difference, uh, the order of operations is important. Turn off uh, symmetry. So this is the object that's going to be cut. This is the object doing the cutting. Go to, let's go to this one. Go to mesh, booleans, difference. Now look at that, we have a nice little television screen. Okay, and then all we need to do now is uh, get our dials. So our dials are just gonna be cylinders, create polygon, cylinder, find out where that is, bring it over here, rotate it forward. You see, rotate X changed, minus 90. Let's inset it into the television. Let's go to the front view. Oh. Front view, nope, wrong side. Front view. There we are. Make it a little larger. All right. Perspective view. Five. And then let's duplicate this guy. Bring it down here. Go back to our front view wireframe. That's pretty good because we just moved it straight down. And the, te uh, the Maya is going to be a little bit more exact than the, the picture. Now the only other thing we have is this little tiny, uh, on, on this thing there's a like a, a rectangle uh, that you use in order to turn uh, the knob and it was usually very difficult to turn. So we're going to go to create and create a cube, bring it closer to our little guy here. Here's a little trick. If you want to bring your shape to where you want it to go, hold down V and then aim it at a, uh, a vert. And then even though you haven't modified it, it's at the right spot. Make that a little bit more narrow. Duplicate that. Let's snap it to that little center there. And I want to mo uh, make it at the proper rotation for this. So it's about 930. I'll put it right there. Let's move this out of the way. Select this guy. And once again, snap this to the middle. Oop. Snap it to the middle. There we go. And that's good. All right, now all we need to do is Boolean uh, union these guys together. So since we have all of them, uh, it's not a difference, then we're just gonna go to mesh, Boolean, union, and there we are. So this is a very good low res um, object. Obviously, like I think there's some other things that we could do to make it look uh, um, prettier like we could you know, we could fix this uh, edge here we could probably click on this turn on symmetry for X multi cut cut over here and cut in the middle there oh it didn't want to do it okay well easy enough to do symmetrical I just control uh, hold down shift and click over there and this one I'll go here hold down oh Enter. This one I'll click here, hold down shift, middle. This one I'll go over here, click, hold down shift, oh, shift, middle. Then vert mode, select this one, select this one. Uh, actually, I'm going to select this one and this one, and I'm going to grab those and pull those in a little. 
open up this one. So the curve shape doesn't necessarily match the object. There, it's a little better. All right, so some things to consider about Booleans. Um, Booleans can create um, a lot of extra verts. Um, so you want to look around, see what you have. Um, there could be some issues. Uh, there's some uh, some shading issues over there. Turn that off. But we can also see if we look closely that we have some uh, issues here with some verts. Um, and this can cause some problems later on. You just want to make sure that your object is nice and clean. Um, uh, because it can, uh, it can come back to bite you in the end. So let's grab this one and uh, press V, snap that one there. Click on this one, snap. Click on this one and snap. Click on this one and snap. Click on that one and snap with the V that is. Click on this one, snap. Click on that one and snap. Click on this and snap. On that and snap. Oh, look at that. Sometimes you have to look a little closely. And over here, click on this one and snap. Click on this and snap. Click on this and snap. That one. Snap. All right, so that's looking cleaner. Uh, the only other thing you can see is look at this, we have all these guys. So all these guys here, um, we can take that, we can select all of them, we can make that middle one there our destination. We hold down, or we press W, press V, snap it all to that middle part. And then we have this edge, snap that to the edge, snap that to the edge. Same for the other side. That's our destination. Snap. Snap. And I'm holding down shift. And then V. And then I just wiggle it a little bit and it goes to the right spot. One thing that you can find about moving this is you can see the curvature gets a little off. Oop, we missed one. So which side do you snap to the other? Good question. You have to figure out which one can deal with it. This one I can see uh, is just not necessarily coplanar. Coplanar means that it's uh, they're all flat um, along one polygon. I wanted to give it the impression that it's coplanar. See that? That's not coplanar.
all these subtle little things that uh, people that don't do environment modeling take for granted. We look down on them. Just kidding. OK, so now that we did all that snapping, we have to make sure that we merge all of our verts. So threshold 0 0.005, merge. Looks good. All right, so that. Uh, and then, of course, when we're done with that, we have a whole bunch of history. Let's delete our history. Oop, are we in the? Yeah, we are. And we have ourselves a retro television. And in the next video, we're going to UV all of this. If we look at the UV map, that's what we have. That's not exactly what we want. Uh, should be pretty easy to do. Other things that we can do that would make things prettier is we could bevel these nice uh, little edges along over here. Uh, we don't have to create the little um, those little dials that are over here. Um, we could also um, extend a little lip. Um, but let's keep this simple and let's just have it like this. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video when we UV map it and create the, uh, the texture for it. Thanks for watching.